Hello, and welcome to Ellen Ruth's Soap. I'm Ellen, and I'm in full fall mode today. I'm making pumpkin soap. Today, I'm gonna to be making a pumpkin pilsner soap. Which pilsner is a beer. I'll show you. <laughs> I've got this awesome German beer. It's a pilsner, which is a light lager. Um, and I'm not even gonna to try to pronounce that name, but this is a great beer and it's going in the soap. Beer is a wonderful additive to soap. And I'll tell you about that in a second. Uh, pumpkin, obviously, I'm gonna use, I've got some organic pumpkin puree, which is wonderful. It's got great skin benefits. It makes a great bar of soap. Um, what I do when I use any sort of a puree, in, in this case pumpkin, the, I will discount the liquid portion for the lye for the amount of ounces of pumpkin I'm putting in. I hope that makes sense. So I treat the puree as a liquid in the soap. That's how I do the volume. So for the fragrance, I have, um, it's bourboned pumpkin. And I'm not using bourbon, I'm using beer. It just it had like, it was a very complex pumpkin scent. It's really nice. Uh, and I just thought of beer soap and I've been wanting to do beer soap. So instead of bourbon, I'm using beer. <laughs> I don't know, can you make a bourbon soap? I, I haven't heard of that. If you've made a bourbon soap, let me know. But I'm digressing. Let me tell you about some of the reasons why beer and pumpkin are awesome in your soap. So beer, I have some little notes I jotted down. Uh, it's moisturizing on your skin and it's said to help fight acne and this is all topically. Um, let me see, okay, the hops and the brewer's yeast in there are wonderful. The hops have uh, skin softening amino acids and the brewer's yeast is antibacterial. And I don't know about, I mean, I'm in my 50s and in the 70s, like beer hair rinsing was a really big thing. So, I mean, using beer for your hair or your skin is not a new concept. Um, so let me go on, pumpkin. Okay, pumpkin is full of enzymes and alpha hydroxy acid. I actually didn't know that. It's antioxidant. It's got a lot of vitamin A and C, which have softening and soothing properties on your skin. And this is all topically. Um, and it's said to uh, the vitamins and the hydroxy acids can boost collagen production. Now, I'm not making that claim, but that's just some of the things that I found on pumpkin topically. It's going in the soap today. Um, so I'm just going to do a very subtle swirl this fragrance does have some vanillin it will discolor a little so to abate that i will use some titanium dioxide um, and then for my orange portion i will use this orange vibrance just to kind of i thought with the discoloration um, i'm hoping it'll get sort of pumpkiny this is a little bit bright but with the fragrance i think it's going to get like a pumpkiny orange and then the td to lighten up portion of it for the swirls. And then after it's all done, I'm just gonna do a scoopy top and I'm gonna sprinkle down some of these teeny little sugar pearls on top. And I just got these at Walmart. You can get them at any craft store in like cake decorating section or your, you know, the cake section. Um, I just thought they would kind of look like, you know, fizzy bubbles from beer, like, you know, how beer fizzies up. <laughs> so that is what I've got together. I'm going to get it all pulled together um, for the beer portion. What I did was I just poured the beer off in a saucepan, simmered it down to get the alcohol out of there and all the carbonation out before I use it in the soap. And then, of course, I cooled it down. You don't want to use it hot. So just be mindful with the pumpkin and the beer. It can get very hot. They both have a lot of natural sugars in them and that can aid to the heat. So I won't be adding any cane sugar to this soap and I won't be adding any sodium lactate because of the properties in here. It's gonna take care of all that on its own. So um, let's get everything pulled together and make some pumpkin Pilsner beer soap. So moving forward here, I've got all of my oils and butters melted together and cooling off. And I'm gonna put my additives that I want in everything. Uh, for this awesome pumpkin soap. So I have my pumpkin puree here, the organic pumpkin puree, and I discounted, this is seven and a half ounces, and I took this out of the liquid portion for the lye. <clears throat> and the only trick, it's not a trick, it's an absolute must when you're working with lye and water discounts, is you can you have to have the volume of lye at least that much liquid you can't ever go less liquid than you do lye so as long as you're at like for this for instance i'm using 13.7 ounces of lye crystals i need to have at least that much liquid in there mixed with the lye um, and i have more i have 15 ounces of liquid so if, i hope this is making sense so i did water discount in there um, for my pumpkin puree because this is considered a liquid 
Uh, but just when you're working with lye, you always need to have the volume or more of liquid to lye. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> There's tons of articles out there, so please read up on your lye safety things. But we're dealing with oils right now and additives. So what I want in everything is I have the fragrance oil in here because it says it does not uh, it cause acceleration or separation. So I feel comfortable putting it in my oils. So I'm going to put all of my pumpkin in here, which again is discounted from my liquids. Pumpkin is, well, it's delicious, of course. We all know that. Pumpkin pie, pumpkin muffins, pumpkin latte, pumpkin everything, right? But it is actually chock full of vitamins. Uh, the beta carotene and the vitamins and minerals in there is actually very good for your skin. So makes for a beautiful soap and a very good soap. So I'm also going to be adding my organic colloidal oats here because I want this to be an oaty. I was thinking about doing a stout beer because I thought oatmeal and stout, but I had a pilsner and I want, so I went with the pilsner, but it's still got oats in there. There's my kale and clay. And I'm going to get all these additives and blend it in here with the fragrance oil and sort of let them absorb and anchor. And then we'll come in with our beer and lye solution. I've got the pumpkin puree and the oats and the kale in really well and incorporated and blended in here. It's had a couple of minutes to really absorb in there. And so now here is my Pilsner beer um, lye solution. So let me tell you about the beer. I just poured it in a little saucepan and I took a whisk and I brought it up to a boil and I let it simmer for, you know, about four or five minutes, whisking every once in a while until it quit bubbling. And then I cooled it off, obviously. I threw it in the freezer, let it cool off. So that is the beer portion in here. Um, and then I have my lye, and I did go ahead and put about a teaspoon of titanium dioxide in here. Uh, this also has silk fibers in it. <laughs> um, so the titanium dioxide, because this fragrance does discolor to a, you know, a tan to a light brown, and the Pilsner got really caramely color. And I just, you know, I want the orange and the swirls to stand out. So that's what's going on in here. Let's go ahead and just, I'm gonna hand stir this in and then we'll split off for our orange vibrance and our titanium dioxide swirl and top. Oh, it smells good in the studio. Fall is a really fun time. Well, it's one of my favorite seasons. I think a lot of people, fall is their favorite season. Um, but in the soap studio, it just, I tend to like, like foodie smell soaps. So I am in my happy place element with all these foodie smelling fragrances. They're just, to me, they smell warm and nostalgic and family-like and I love fall and just pretty much everything that goes with it. Harvest time. So I just want to get a nice incorporated here, emulsification. I'm having a little color morph and that's okay. It's turning kind of neon yellow. Woohoo! <laughs> that's all the sugars in the beer, the sugars in the pumpkin. I did not add any sugar to my lye water solution because certainly don't need it with um, the additives in here. So we got, that's well in emulsified here. Let me go ahead and pour off my portion that I'll add a little titanium dioxide to, and then um, it'll be for the top. We'll do a swirl and a top. So here's my pre-mixed TD, even though there's already a little TD in there. This is one part water soluble TD to two parts water and some little marbles in there to keep it mixing. We'll just stir that in. Now I'm going to add my, um, let me pull this stick, pull this out so I can get my stick blender in here. Add in my beautiful orange vibrance from Nurture Soap, which is just a classic. It's a beautiful orange. There we go. And I'm hoping with the discoloration that it will sort of mellow out. I mean, if it stays this orange, that's cool, but I'm hoping it'll get sort of a brownish pumpkin-y orange is my hope. So 
I'm just going to blend this in a little. And pumpkin fragrances can go kind of quick. They usually have nutmeggy, vanilla y, cinnamon y overtones, and those are accelerating factors. So I just pulse with the blender and then stir with the blender. I'm definitely not stirring this, in, or I'm not blending with the mixer this entire time. I'm kind of using it as a spoon and then just a pulse because I want to make sure that mica is really dispersed well. So I'm going to pull my stick blender out, or sorry, my whisk, pull my whisk out over here and I'm hop over here even though the blender's a little dirty. It's getting thick but not too thick. And the TD will make it go quick. There we go. Now, let's get these gorgeous colors down in here. It's been about 24 hours and I'm excited to get into this pumpkin Pilsner beer soap. Uh, it got really hot last night. I did want it to go through gel phase, but I had to come down and I took the lid off and I kept moving it around on the stainless steel table to keep it cooled off so it did not volcano or crack on the top, but it got hot. <laughs> so all the sugars from the beer and the pumpkin added up together to a hot soap. So, definitely went through gel phase, which is good. I like gel phase. get into these yummy yummy soaps they smell really good today oh that's very gentle swirls this is just my little end sample piece so hard to tell on the end piece you gotta really get in here to see I don't know if I have my cutters set so I'll cut my first bar and then I will weigh it and see if I have everything set up properly it's looking a little thick but the only way to tell is to pop it on my scale Oh, these are pretty and they smell fantastic. Pumpkin Pilsner. Yum. Yep, we're in the range for my weight, so we're going to keep on cutting here. So again, I cut by weight, not necessarily by size, even though they're similar in size, but um, I like to have my finished cured bars to weigh about five ounces or a little generous five plus ounces um, I'll go down to four and a half ounces on some of them but so I factor that in when I weigh them uncured they're gonna have a more water weight to them and that is how I do it uh, some people cut by dimensions only 
um, for thickness and I think that's great. Maybe it makes things easier. <laughs> I tend to cut by weight, which is why I still have a single bar cutter. <clears throat> Some of my recipes have a little more batter than others. Um, when I do frosting on top, it throws things off. So I like to be able to adjust this. Um, with the multi-bar cutter, you're just kind of set with that you know, depth of soap, which if you have your recipes down to a science and you know exactly, I think they're fantastic. Someday I want to get a multi-bar cutter. <laughs> um, that's on my bucket list for soap supplies, but I just haven't, you know, needed to do it yet. And I like cutting soaps. This is very relaxing for me, so I don't mind the single bar cutting. And I think these are beautiful. Oh, they smell great. I sure wish you could smell them. I like a good brewed beer though, and I love pumpkin anything. So to me, this combination is pretty fabulous. It almost has a pumpkin pie, sort of a baked scent, but not quite sweet like that. I don't know how to describe it. Maybe pumpkin muffins <laughs> or a pumpkin latte or something. That's pretty good though. And it moved a little, you know, it didn't move fast. I would call this a, a medium trace. I wouldn't say it speeded up trace a bunch, but you know, it wasn't a slow moving fragrance, that's for sure. But I kind of think it's worth it. it smells great.